All right, it is live. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a special TCP podcast. Here we have a cosplayer interview with Miss Bunny Rose, so could you introduce yourself, please? Hi, I'm Bunny Rose, and I cosplay and model. And of course, you know me, I am Renegade Albert of the host. So we're going to get to the panel really quickly. So we have Mr. Nico, the real eternal. Please introduce yourself, good sir. What's up, guys? Next up, we have Mr. Justin. The master of voice work. Yeah, the master of being Gordon Ramsay after that little interlude we had. (laughs) (laughs) You idiot sandwich, get back to work! (laughs) Imagine Gordon Ramsay watching this. That would be hilarious. Send it to him so he can read our food. But um, we're going to get right into it with the (laughs) questions here. So here's question number one. How do you deal with negativity in the cosplay community, and what would be your words to inspire and help people who dealt with worse situations? Uh, so honestly, I haven't dealt with a whole lot of negative negativity, at least uh, personally. Like usually, when I go to conventions, at least um, in person, I've never had like a really uh, bad experience that has stood out on my mind. Most negativity would probably come from online. Which kind of makes sense because um, you can say whatever you want uh, and do whatever you want anonymously and not have really any repercussions. Um, But anyways, going along with that, um, my biggest advice is seriously to just ignore it. Um, Because I've I've had it personally as well. I mean, uh, anyone that has any sort of online presence, you're going to get hate. You're going to get people that you know, are not going to say nice things about you or your work. Um, and you just can't let it like get you down. I mean, yeah, you're every now and then you're going to get those comments or, you know, sometimes messages, but you really just have to look past it because what you're doing is what you love and you're doing it for yourself and you're doing it because you enjoy it. So that would be my biggest advice is just ignore it and don't let it keep you from doing what you love and your passions. Yes, don't let your dreams be dreams and uh, kick all those perverts to the curb. So, <laughs> <laughs> This man is clapping over here. Give him a gold star. So we're going to move on to question number two. So Mr. Nico, could you read that off, please? Uh, Ren, are you there? Yes, I am here. Hello. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, <laughs> I forgot. I, 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 I sort of muted myself by accident. <laughs> I was about to be like, that, those words inspired him so much that he might have fainted. Actually, I, I, I made a Shia LaBeouf joke and... Uh, Just do oh it! God. That sort of went through on the recording, so it is there, is there, believe me. Uh, so we're going to move on to number two, so Mr. Nico, could you read that off, please? Alright. How long do you plan to continue your, your hobby of cosplay, and how has this hobby impacted your personal life? Um, well, I've been doing cosplaying since I was about probably around like 11 or 12. And so I've already been doing it for a good while. And honestly, I don't see myself even stopping when I'm middle age because you go to conventions and, uh, you see people who are middle age and possibly and older who are cosplaying and they're doing it because it's super fun. And that's the reason I started doing it in the first place. Um, so I mean, it's hard to say what the future holds, of course, but I really don't see myself stopping it anytime soon, just just because it's purely fun. I love going to conventions so much. I love meeting people that way. Um, and then as far as how it's impacted my personal life, gosh, uh, <laughs> it's it's impacted it definitely a lot because it's... It's, it's especially because it's become such a bigger thing it's, and it's become more well-known and more mainstream um, because I got into cosplaying firstly and then the modeling kind of came uh, later on. So, I mean, it's just a big hobby and passion of mine and it's it's super fun to, to be able to, to both do like photo shoots and go to conventions and have fun um, that way. So, and it's just really nice that it's such a bigger, there's such a bigger community and that it's more mainstream and that I can, I've, uh, I've like made friends with other cosplayers and that way, and we've been able to like help each other out and whatnot. So 
yeah, it's, it's definitely impacted it a lot because, I mean, I have a regular job, but cosplaying takes a lot of my free time and it's my passion. I don't think this question is in the document, but I'm going to ask it because this segues into something that's on my mind. But uh, have you met any of the bigger cosplayers? Like, um, have you seen them at any conventions that you could personally name off? And how were they? You know, I haven't, honestly, I think like the biggest co- Well, okay. Probably the biggest one I would say is, uh, like, I go to Dragon Con every single year. Unless I have some sort of emergency, I'm going to go to that one every single year. And I've seen, I've kind of passed by Yaya Han. Um, and I've seen, like, other ones, but I I don't know. I might not have recognized them, um, like, their tables. But I haven't had any personal, I haven't personally talked to anyone, um, like, really major, I guess. Okay, understandable, because uh, we always ask this question because for some reason I never put it in the document, but uh, <laughs> that is good to know that you at least uh, saw her there. Maybe you'll run into her someday. Hopefully. I would hope to. Yeah, that would be awesome. And I've been at conventions where I was, I or I knew, okay, there was, an, uh, there was another one. I think, it, I think it was her, or there was another one, I forget. And they were, I learned later on that they were at the convention, but I didn't know otherwise. So I really am hoping I do run into one um, eventually. Yeah. Yeah, give them a giant hug, squeeze them, you know. <laughs> um, do your best Bane impression with the backbreaker. <laughs> of course. All right, I'm just being silly now. So, Mr. Justin, could you read off question number three, please? What was your main inspiration that gave you that push to partake in the cosplaying slash modeling medium? Um, probably, so, to answer that question, um, okay, so, all my life, I've been really involved in the arts, um, I've been drawing since I could hold a pencil I guess so and I've always been really really interested in art and I've always loved making things and being creative um so as far as like so like I was saying before cos I, cosplay was the first thing and then modeling came kind of later on and to where I kind of meld the both of them but um pr probably it was a mixture of me already having uh this love of doing love of doing creative things and making things and then i was uh, the first thing i was introduced or I, I was introduced to anime when i was around uh the t probably 11 12 10 11 12 something like that and i was just huge huge into anime uh and then and my friend i had a friend who told me all about it and because she, she was really into it and then from there she started telling me about cosplay and tell and uh and i was like what people are like going dressing up as their favorite characters and they're going and this was also when conventions weren't uh as popular i guess as they are now so i was like oh my gosh that's that's literally a combination of multiple things i love like i love anime and then video games uh not not long after that plus i love making things i like being creative uh, i love dressing up i love having fun with that so i'm not sure i guess i don't know if this is answering the question directly but hopefully it is um that it was a mixture of a few things that um got me got me really into um cosplaying and then the modeling kind of came later on to be merged with that. Yeah, it answers it perfectly. It shows like where your interest came from and how it progressed over time. Uh, so I think that's the perfect segue into the next question because you mentioned something about it. So number four is, are you an avid gamer? If so, what games do you enjoy playing? How did you get into gaming? Um. So... Yeah, I would say I, I am. Um, yeah, I really, really enjoy video games. Don't we uh, all? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, who doesn't? Oh my gosh. There's something, it's one of those things where there's something for everyone. 
Um, but, uh, so as far as the ones I enjoy, okay, I'll start it off with saying how I got into it. The way I got into it was I would play all of my older brother's old video games. The video games he had or he, the video games he passed down for me. And that was mostly Nintendo games. So think like Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, and then like GameCube. And then so when I was younger, I was mostly focused on Nintendo games because that's what I knew from my brother. And I liked how cute they were and fun and colorful. Um, so and then later on, I started getting to into other non-Nintendo games. And that actually... I wouldn't say it's very recent, but I, it was more so in the past, like, five years or so. So, um, some of my favorite uh, Nintendo games would be uh, Super Mario, Pokemon, Legend of Zelda, Kirby. I love all of those. Super excited about Breath of the Wild, let me tell you. Um, Woo! <laughs> yeah! Yes. I'm definitely planning on getting... A, really really wanting a nintendo switch yes um and then animal crossing i love gosh i love that one and then outside of that some of my favorites are i really love uh fantasy rpg games and like action adventure um so i like uh i love the final fantasy games elder yeah. scrolls um and then ones like uncharted tomb raider uh things like that yes uncharted i can i can give this woman a round of applause <laughs> <laughs> i love uncharted so uh we're gonna move on to the second question so mr nico could you answer that please that is number All five right. to add on to that is there a game that you thoroughly waited for to come out this come out that's in the distant future um well i already said breath of the wild but i feel like that's not in the far distant future um, mostly, I mean, I'm sorry? Yeah, it was back during the initial announcement, like, years ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess, like, my main focus about what I, what I'm looking forward to is mostly, like, Nintendo, the Nintendo Switch games. Like, there's that new Mario one, like, Super Mario Odyssey. That one looks really cool. And I'm just really interested in what games will come out. Uh, for that system and what they're gonna also I don't know hopefully transfer from Wii U to Switch because I don't I don't have a Wii U because I was specifically waiting for whatever that next Nintendo console is gonna be which ended up being the Switch Mr. Justin could you do the next question please number six what are your thoughts on the convention scene and has it helped your cosplay flourish in that community <laughs> um so I absolutely love the convention scene. It's going to conventions is literally my favorite thing to do other than just like traveling in general and going to new places um, and things like that. Um, because I actually, my, my job right now makes it hard for me to take weekends off, which is when conventions happen. So I have to, so whenever, uh, I want to do something on the weekend, I have to be very selective about what it is that I want to take my time off for. And conventions is always my number one thing. I always look in advance throughout the year what conventions are, are you know, are going to be on my top that I definitely want to try to get to. And I have to plan for that, like, wait, you know, in advance. Um, because it's just it's just my favorite thing I meet. It's it's a place you can go to just not care at all what people think about you. Everyone's everyone's nerdy, everyone's awkward, whatever. You don't have to worry about that kind of stuff cuz I know <laughs> I am. I'm sh I'm actually <laughs> like shy until I get to talking to someone. Um so it really allows you to express yourself, be who you are and make friends that way and everyone is really like warming and welcome like friendly i guess is a good way of putting it whenever i go to conventions everyone for the most part is very friendly and you can just strike up a conversation with the person next to you um and as far as how it's helped my cosplay flourish i mean yeah just going along with that how um i've made so many friends and you know and it's also a way to like 
um, I guess like, I don't want to say advertise yourself, but what, you know, when you are, uh, when cosplaying is a huge part of your life and you work really hard, it's your chance to kind of show it off and get, um, and make new friends with, uh, people, whether they cosplay or not. Yeah. And it's the greatest thing ever. <laughs> I always wanted to go, but I never just got that chance to go. So maybe really here's should. hoping one day in the future I go to a con. You should. Because everyone told me how good it was before previously, and it's making me very curious to check that out too. Uh, so number seven is an add-up question to this. So to add on to this, what would be your dream convention to attend if you had the opportunity to go? That would be New York Comic Con or San Diego Comic Con because I've never been to either of those. Um, the on the only biggest one I've the like my favorite convention as I mentioned earlier is Dragon Con. That one is a huge one. Um, but there are also other ones that I hear about that I've never been to. But um, I would say yeah, those two just because they're so well known, they're so massive that. Those would either of those would be my dream con. Yes. You get to scream out, "Yo, Marvel!" Because all those announcements are so good at Comic Con. They are. I I couldn't imagine the hype for them live. Like it it, it must be mind blowing actually. <laughs> so Justin, could you please do question? No, actually, I want you to do number nine. Nico, you do number eight. Okay. Name some of the best and worst aspects of preparing a cosplay. So the probably the best. Um, so as far as preparing a cosplay, when you're okay. So the best part, obviously, when you finish it and you're like, "Yay, I'm finally done!" and it looks awesome and I have everything together. Uh, other than that, um. When you're when you're first when you're first getting the materials for it, and it's just building that hype, you're like, okay, I got this part, and I got this part, I got the wig, I got, you know, this material, and you start to slowly get. It's just exciting to get each of those components gradually together. That's the fun part. And then the worst part is definitely the frustration and actually working on and building. Uh, on the cosplay because because it is such a creative thing and there are so so many tutorials and help and communities for uh, working and building cosplays but even still everyone has their own way of doing things and it's w with each cosplay you really have to be imaginative and you have to be resourceful and it's really it can be really tricky trying to get everything to work work out how you have envisioned in your mind because that definitely does not always happen so there's definitely some frustrations with it but it all it it really always pays off all right so uh i kind of want to give you some nightmare vibes here but uh what's your opinion on hot glue i was about to ask <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, my opinion oh on hot glue? Yes, yes, your opinion yes. on it. Oh, okay. Um, huh. It's kind of funny. I actually uh, like it because it really... <laughs> Shock and surprise. Really, like, okay, because a lot of people, like, diss on it. And because there's so many other ways of making things that aren't hot glue, but... I don't know. I use hot glue and it works for me for a lot of different things. So I probably just haven't figured out those better like ways of making things. But so far, it's been fine for me. <laughs> yeah, it's a running gag on our podcast because everyone we interviewed previously, they seem to really hate it because it's such a mess. <laughs> so we always ask people that question just to get their opinions and experience on it. But we're going to move on to question number nine. So, Justin, could you read that off, please? What are your thoughts on the principal photography phase after a cosplay shoot and the amount of work that goes into photos to make them look as good as possible post-production? Um, so when you say post-production, do you mean after making the cosplay or after doing the, like, photo shoot? After doing the photo shoot. 
Okay. Um, hmm. Goes into action. Like, basically, when you get them back and you see how they look and how the photographer fixed everything up. So, what, what I, what I think after Of the work. I <laughs> yeah, of the work that uh, the photographers do after the photo shoot and everything they fix to make it as good as possible. So you want? So you're wondering what my thoughts are after they've like edited the photos? Yes, and how they look afterwards, like the stuff that you just don't notice, or um, the stuff that they fix up that you might oh. have um, forgot, like in the photo itself, that might have been a problem. Oh, okay. So like seeing imperfections from after seeing like the professional photos taken yes um hmm actually i really haven't had like because i mean i yeah you definitely see every you see the you do you do sometimes see the imperfections in your cosplays but it is also their job to like make everything look as good as it possibly can mm. um so i i don't know i guess i haven't really had um, I haven't really seen any, noticed, like, major imperfections in my cosplays after getting, I mean, I'll, I'll notice, I guess, little things here and there, because, yeah, you do see, you know, wh what your cosplay can look at as good as it can, and what you could have done better, but I try not to be hard on myself, but, because, I don't know, my photographers, they always do a really nice job, they really do. Okay, yeah, that that totally is good because um, we've had people come on here and they've said that, you know, not everything's perfect. They might not have noticed something after the photography phase. So um, that is very important that you aren't hard on yourself. I think that's very good and a boost of confidence for certain people. Um, definitely try to be confident in yourself no matter what you do and try to get better after the fact. Um, so self-esteem, self-esteem. <laughs> Absolutely. Jeez. Yeah, cuz I mean, especially with cosplay, you're there's gonna be imperfections there, especially if you put a lot of work into uh making it and stuff. I mean, it's 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 tricky to make it look just, you know, spot on like the character. So, it's just you got to not be hard on yourself, I think. You know, you know you did a you worked as hard as you could. You did what you could and it looks awesome. You did an awesome job. No, not enough money. Hashtag cosplayer problems. <laughs> uh, not enough money. Well, that's literally a roadblock in pretty much every kind of cosplay you could think of. Yeah, I've heard that before. Yeah, definitely heard it before. Uh, but we're gonna move on to mm -hmm. question number ten. So, is there any other mediums that you like, like comic books or comic book films or anime? Can you please list all some of your favorites? Yeah, okay. That's a there there's a list for you. Um <laughs> <laughs> So obviously, you know, I like video games. Told you told you all what I like for that. Yeah, I really I definitely like anime. Um like I said, that was the thing that got me started into cosplay in the first place because especially back when I was first doing it, this was in like the mid 2000s conventions were pretty much primarily anime it was anime conventions not multi-genre or like pop culture or whatever conventions where it's a mix of a lot of different things uh, it seemed, at least as far as what i was into and what i was aware of at the time it was mostly just anime centered um so that's that's always been something of uh, I'm, i've been into um and uh I'm not so much a comic book person, but I really love, uh, like, Marvel and DC movies, especially Marvel movies. Um, other than that, uh, I watch, I definitely love movies, love TV shows. Um, I like books. Like, I love fantasy book series. Um, I guess, like, some examples are, like, Harry Potter. I really, really love Harry Potter. I love Game of Thrones TV shows. Um, GOT. <laughs> GOT. That's what's up. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's just so many things now that can be. I don't know. It just kind of blows my mind, honestly. That is such a kind of a mainstream thing now that a lot of different things can be considered geeky. I uh, air quotes geeky 
um, which is just any sort of pop culture thing. But yeah, I have a lot of my interests are definitely varied. I'm not dead, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I just muted myself for a bit. Uh, so, what has been your favorite character to cosplay to date? Uh, okay, so I feel like I have two answer, sort of two answers to that because, like I said, there is, I I I kind of separate myself in a way of what I cosplayed when I was first cosplaying and then what I've been cosplaying in recent years. Like, once I started modeling and gotten more serious and, like, working on my own cosplays and all that. Um, because I really, to, to my favorite one, when I was 12, I cosplayed Inuyasha. And that was the funnest, that was just the funnest thing. Because that was when I first started to go into conventions. And it was, it was just especially exciting because it was such a new thing. And I had a, I don't know, I just had a lot of fun with p other people who cosplayed uh, any like Inuyasha characters as well. Um, so I would say either that one or my Tifa Lockhart cosplay, that one I really enjoy. Um, I also have a Harley Quinn one, and it's one of my more uh, like complex ones, I guess, but. I don't really enjoy wearing it, to be honest, because it's not very comfortable. <laughs> so if I had to answer that, uh, other than Yasha, probably Tifa. So I have a legitimate question. When you were wearing that Inuyasha cosplay, did you have any Kagomes like run around and put you on a leash? Oh my gosh. You have no idea how much that happened. That and people saying sit and I would like slam myself on the floor and people would put like stand, not stand on me, but put their feet on me. Yes. That's why it was so fun. It's like interacting with people where we're acting out like things from the show. That was just awesome. All right. So we're going to move on to the next question. So Mr. Nico, could you take that off, please? What other cosplays have you personally done? Um, okay, so the one the ones that I recall when I was younger, okay, Inuyasha, I had this Azumanga Dayo just school uniform and a snow fairy sugar. <laughs> um, and then in the, uh, in the recently, um, so Tifa, Harley Quinn, uh, Bulma, uh, Cammy from Street Fighter, uh, Super Sonico, uh, Fluttershy, which I have, I have like a couple different versions of that. Juliet Starling from Lollipop Chainsaw, Luna Lovegood from Harry Potter, uh, Misty from Pokemon, Daenerys from Game of Thrones, uh, Hinata from Naruto, and the Elf from Dragon's Crown. Quite a resume. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot more than I imagined. Good, good God. Oh, that's actually wait, but, pretty good though that's pretty good. i actually might be like missing a couple but that that's what i yeah <laughs> you see what you guys don't know is that she secretly has three dragons somewhere in a cellar <laughs> exactly. and that she will sick them on you if you piss her off oh wow well, um I, I better watch out uh i don't want to get eaten so yeah <laughs> <laughs> But uh, we're going to move on to the next one. Uh, who's supposed to read next? Justin, could you read question number 13, please? What are your thoughts on crafting and creating material for cosplay? And have you personally done it to enhance your own costume? Uh, yeah, so well, we talked about that earlier, how it's frustrating for sure, uh, but it's very rewarding. Uh, so... <laughs> I will, I will be completely honest, I am not a seamstress. I don't sew, I, I just, that's not my thing. I may have, I may be interested in it in the future because, you know, like I said, I'm a creative person. Who knows what I'm going to be into, but for now, not my thing. My thing is definitely mo like modifying a cosplay or kind of the material I have already, uh, like adding, adding or modifying kind of things here and there. Or making prop, uh, props, accessories, things like that. Things that involve like fo uh, crafting kind of things like foam and um, paint, hot glue. 
Well, everyone hates. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I make it work. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to move to the final question here. Um, in closing, what advice would you give out to those who want to try cosplay but are nervous in the premise of doing so? So, okay, I want to I want to say uh, as far as my personal experience, I don't th- I don't think anyone has anything to be nervous about because like I was kind of saying earlier, cosplaying and the whole community of cosplaying all these no one it's a very it's a very open-minded community and it's just it's seriously it's the most it's just the most fun thing to be dressed up as a character that you love that you put work into you know creating this cosplay and you love it and you're going somewhere that other people love the same things that you do and, you know, you, and it's just an awesome feeling to have someone be like, oh my god, blah 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 character, and like, want to talk to you, or, you know, just, some people will just shout, shout my character name at a con, and it's like, yo, and, I don't know, it's just, it's so nice, it's such a nice feeling, um, and honestly, it's actually helped my shyness and anxiety by doing cosplay, because, um, I, it's really hard for me to like start up a conversation with someone. So if I were to go to a convention, them feels. do what? <laughs> them feels. Yeah. <laughs> so whenever I do go to a convention, um, it's, it's awesome because you, by dressing up, you already have, um, I don't, I don't know what the word is, but a, a conversation yeah confidence and like a conversation starter and i love making friends like and most people like making friends and a lot of people i even myself i have a lot a lot of anxiety and this allows for a way of opening up that conversation with another person um so and and then another thing is because like pop culture and geeky things i guess like you know video games and anime and tv shows and movies like they're all just so so much more popular now and so much more well known than what they used to be that there's really no reason to be nervous to do it i mean you're not it's it's just so much more accepted i guess now and it just it it's very helpful to to do it and you there's just so much there's just so much rewarding to be had from doing it. Yeah, I I definitely will say the best way to break anxiety is to just, like, go to a con and uh, meet people that are just like you. I mean, we're all there to enjoy geek culture and watch people dress up in pretty funny, sometimes serious ways. Uh, I saw some cosplays that are insane, and I always wanted to go to a convention. So I was always that sort of... Uh, socialite type of person that likes to go out and meet different people so uh i think that would be best just go out branch out there geek culture is great even find conversations somewhere like on twitter or something about someone talking about um their favorite comic book medium you know uh there's always venues for people to talk to others so that is good advice to have so just yeah. do it yeah 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 just uh you know just, just go make your dreams come it. true <laughs> Don't let your dreams be dreams. I knew you were going to say that. Oh, my God. Just do it. But uh, we're going to do our little outros here. Um, so, Miss Bunny Rose, could you please plug your social media? Tell us where we can find you, all that good stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. So, uh, you can find me on Facebook. Uh, a lot of my social media, it's either, if it's going to be like a one-word URL, it's either Bunny Rose, just spelled together or it's bunny rose and the o is a zero um so one of those is you're gonna find me uh and i'm on facebook uh twitter uh twitch i stream on twitch um instagram have an instagram uh those would probably be my primary ones yeah yeah also i'll put those in the description as well so people will be able to find that in the video on youtube for sure uh so mr justin 
the man of multiple voices. Where can we find you on social media? Uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, uh, Luigi just <laughs> knocked at the door. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, you can uh, find him on Twitter at uh, Inferno Dragon 3D, N- not 2D, 3D. And then, you fucking idiot, if you're still listening, you idiot sandwiches, you can find him <laughs> at Inferno Dragon 343 on YouTube, Twitch, even Hitbox and Beam, you know, those two streaming sites no one else knows. <laughs> you bunch of morons. <laughs> now get back to cooking! <laughs> Mr. Nico, where can we find you? I'm cracking up over here. Yeah. You can find me on Twitter at Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat as Eternal Zilvin. And you can find me on Twitch as Eternal Zilvin Gaming. And you can find me on YouTube known as Nico the Real Eternal. All right. And you can find me, you know, on Pornhub, uh, Brazzers. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you can seriously find me on Twitter at renoperative underscore. You can find me on YouTube at Renegade Operative. Uh, I'm probably going to be uploading this sometime either tomorrow or on Monday. Uh, I'm probably going to talk about some Dead Space stuff on my channel on Monday. Uh, EA is kind of messing up, but I'm going to get into it a lot more in detail on Monday. So I will see you guys there. This is the TCP signing off. We had a great interview with Bunny, and um, I hope she comes back in the future sometime. It'll be excellent to have her. So um, I thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It was fun. So we're going to sign off. So we'll see you guys later out there in YouTube land. Take care.